I am Dr. Lisa DeJoya, TMJ and Sleep Therapy in Southwestern Ontario. There is a conception that those who breathe through their mouth can look foolish or unintelligent. This thinking stems from a lack of facial development that has occurred from individuals who have not used their noses for breathing. But Oscar is different. I just don't want him growing up feeling like there's something wrong with him. Neither do I. That's why he could use some help. A lot of help. Well, he's not stupid. He's pretty stupid. No, he's just going through that stage the boys go through where they can't access a clever part of their brain. Yeah. Honey, he's a mouth breather. What? <sighs> Oxygen is essential for life and how it enters into our body can have a direct impact on the physiology of our body. Proper breathing stems only from nasal breathing and mouth breathing is detrimental to the homeostasis of our body. The use of mouth breathing has damaging and lifelong consequences. Chronic mouth breathing may contribute to the following. Compromised craniofacial development, acidic pH of the body, cardiovascular disease, metabolic disease, introduction of unfiltered, poorly humidified air into the lungs, upper chest breathing, which is inefficient and tiring, chronic overbreathing, sleep disordered breathing, temporal mandibular dysfunction, noisy eating, speech issues, reverse swallow pattern, inflammation of soft tissues of the airway, dental malocclusion, and caries. In 1981, an experiment on primates and oral respiration was published by Harvald et al. in which the primates had nasal plugs inserted into their nostrils. This, in effect, forced the animals into mouth breathing, which resulted in acquired facial changes and dental occlusion different from their control animals. The animals were forced to adapt. And as you can see in the photos... There is notching of the upper lip, mouth posture which is open, long and slender tongue and midline groove formed, dental malocclusion, forward posturing of the mandible producing a dual bite. The tongue is protruded in an effort to clear the airway. In this photo, courtesy of John Mew, the results of mouth breathing are evident. There's an increase in the vertical facial height of the young lady and compromise in her facial aesthetics. When we breathe through our mouth, we encourage inflammation of the nasal structures. Inflammation of the nasal structures can be directly related to the foods we ingest. The presence of allergens such as pet dander can also be inflammatory. These variables will lead to congestion, enlargement of the adenoids, tonsils, and turbinates. There can also be deviation of the septum, polyps, and tumors that can form obstructions and result in mouth breathing. Mouth breathing will mean there is a loss in the following processes. The nose acts as a filter and retains small particles from the air, such as pollen. The nose will add moisture to the air and prevent dryness in the lungs and the bronchial tubules. It also helps to warm up cold air that enters into our system and hence achieve body temperature before it gets into the lungs. Often the importance of our nose goes unnoticed until we develop a bad cold and our quality of life suffers and we aren't able to get good sleep. The nasal passages and the sinuses produce a substance called nitric oxide and this helps our lungs to absorb oxygen. Nasal breathing results in 50% more resistance in the airstream as opposed to mouth breathing. As a result, there is 10 to 20% more oxygen uptake. Nasal resistance during inhalation helps maintain elasticity of the lungs. Nitric oxide increases the ability of transportation of oxygen throughout our body and our heart. It helps to relax the vascular smooth muscle and allows blood vessels to dilate. 
Nitric oxide is also antifungal, antiviral, antiparasitic, antibacterial, and helps the immune system to fight infections. Nasal breathing versus mouth breathing. The depth of our inhale is also important because the lower lobes of the lungs are highly saturated with oxygen and alkaline-rich parasympathetic nerve endings designed for relaxation. These nerve endings can only be accessed through nasal diaphragmatic breathing. The upper lobes of the lungs have predominantly sympathetic nerve endings, which are used in the fight or flight response. These two branches of the autonomic nervous system send different biochemical signals when communicating with our brain. When mouth breathing, the diaphragm muscle does not move downward or upward and the lower lobes of their lungs don't inflate. Our heart rate rises and the brain senses a threat producing a fight or flight response. Our bodies are designed to breathe in this way for emergencies only and not on a regular basis for our daily life and exercise. Eventually, the overuse of these chemicals takes its toll on the body, and we see a buildup of acid and inflammation in the cells, accelerating our aging process and chronic illnesses. The normal or physiological way of breathing is through your nose. Breathing through the nose permits to purify the air by the structures inside the nasal cavity. In that way, the air entering into your naso and oropharynx, your throat, is not going to heavily affect the lymphoid tissue in the adenoids and tonsils, which is the last barrier to catch harmful particles in the air before it reaches your lungs. Besides clearing the air from harmful particles, nasal breathing stimulates the production of gases and substances in the nose, which are going to facilitate the entrance of the air in the lungs and prevent infection in your respiratory system. Mouth breathing allows the air to pass directly into your throat, where the adenoids and tonsils are located. In that way, the air entering into your body through your mouth has not previously been purified and the lymphoid tissue in the adenoids and tonsils become the first defensive barrier against the harmful particles contained in the air. As a consequence, that lymphoid tissue overgrows, occupying a large volume of your throat. That makes more difficult for the nasal breathing, and you make a habit of breathing through your mouth. In order to breathe through your mouth, your lower jaw has to come down, as well as your tongue has to rest on the floor of your mouth. Breathing through the nose is the correct way, and so the tongue is able to rest on your palate, stimulating a normal growth and development of your upper jaw. Conversely, when you breathe through your mouth, your tongue has to descend and protrude. At the same time, the pressure of your cheeks increases pushing the upper jaw inwards. So the growth and development of your upper jaw is negatively affected, resulting in a narrow and high palate. The upper dental arch acquires a V-shape instead of being a rounded dental arch. Therefore, your teeth do not have space to properly align. This also produces an incorrect swallowing function. Every time you swallow, between 1,600 to 2,400 times per day, the tongue positions low, staying away from your palate. That forces the tip of your tongue to position between your upper and lower front teeth. That pushes your front teeth to show out of your mouth and your tongue resting on the floor of your mouth with the tip of the tongue between your front teeth. That is called an open bite as your upper and lower front teeth do not touch when you close your mouth. All those dysfunctions, mouth breathing, incorrect tongue posture, open mouth, and incorrect swallowing are going to continue affecting the growth and development of your upper and lower jaws. And as a consequence, there is less room for your teeth and they become crooked. Remember, the nose is for breathing and the mouth is for eating. Breathing through your nose and keeping your mouth closed with your lips together is going to help your upper and lower jaws to grow and develop better. But more importantly, it makes you healthier.